everybody, hello and welcome as always. I'm Sean, this is In The Mix, episode number 48 of our Pentagon Challenge. Now, full disclosure, this is like the first time really, I think, in channel history that we're kind of save scumming a little bit. Not because we lost, but because I recorded this episode, went to edit it, it had no audio. I then went the next day to try and record it again. Melbourne had an earthquake during the middle of the recording, so I stopped that session. And now we're coming back for a third time to hopefully try and get this episode sorted for you guys. So fingers crossed, it all goes through. There's no technical issues or anything like that. I can see the audio is recording. Earthquakes aren't super common in Australia. We should be good to go. And we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we want to try and bring you guys to finish off our season with River Plate and hopefully start looking towards the next season. Another tilt at the Copa Libertadores. Let's jump straight in and see how we've gone. So first and foremost, over on that far side of the page that you guys can see over there, sitting pretty at the top of the table, 36 games played, 33 wins and three draws, no defeats, plus 96 goal difference and 102 points sit River Plate. We remain undefeated. We are on the cusp of the invincible season. We've got two league games to finish off the year that we're going to bring you guys in today's episode to hopefully bring you up to date with that and see if we can go the entire league season undefeated. We are already declared champions. We are currently 26 points clear of second place Newells and Boca Juniors. Everything's been going fantastically well, basically, since that Copa Libertadores defeat that you guys saw in the last episode. Jesus Moya, 35 goals for the season. Antonio Britos, 7.67 average rating for the season. 28 assists, which is absolutely fantastic for him. Also, he was a player that didn't want to re-sign a new contract in the last year of his deal. He has thankfully changed his mind, and we've been able to nail him down for a couple more seasons, which is great. Some big clubs, Liverpool, Chelsea, whoever else, are in for him as well. So he'll be fantastic if we can keep hold of him for another year. Also got 11 player of the match awards, which is closing in on a record for the club and the division. We have essentially just been sweeping teams aside. Last episode you guys saw, we did lose on penalties to Palmeiras. They went on, I think, to win the Copa Libertadores title. I have to double check on that. They did beat Gremio 3-2, so we went down to the eventual champions in the end. But penalties isn't, you know, the best way to do it. We did go out on penalties against Boca Juniors, a Super Classico Copa Argentina semi-final. Disappointing. I thought we were the better side in this one. Again, we just didn't find that kind of like final goal that we needed to really go through and penalties just don't seem to be our strong suit at any point but since then pretty much all wins throughout the league we've got a couple of draws here or there in a few different competitions the Copa Libertadores for next season has actually already started the 2041 competition and we're through the group stages of that which have gone really comfortably we topped oh we didn't top our group we came second in our group level on points but behind on goal difference with Gremio which again is fine it just sets us up a slightly different routing through the knockout stages which will take place in the next episode and next season where we have a knockout or a second round first leg tie against San Lorenzo from our division. We're also going to play them in today's episode, so we're going to learn quite a bit about how we travel. But otherwise, the squad's doing really well. The tactic, even though it's got all these red portions here all around it, is still doing, I think, really, really well. You guys will see, and we might try and focus on it in the games that we play today, we're very, very narrow in possession. Like We don't really get outside the width of that 18-yard box, but we get bodies in really good positions to both be difficult to break down in that space, kind of this triangle area that Mateus is kind of hovering in. Caro and Alvarez, they kind of tuck into it as well. Magia steps into midfield alongside Mateus. That part's working really well. And then our forward line, like these guys tuck inside really quickly. Both the inside forward and the inverted winger. The inverted wing backs kind of get in there to support them as well. So we really overload in forward areas and particularly in the 18-yard box really effectively. And play development's been great. You can see here the front four, all four star current ability. Some of them have the potential to go and be above and beyond that. Caro and Facundo Alvarez, who weren't great as inverted wing backs at the start of the season, now up to two and a half star. I think they'll improve again as we get into further into the season. Jeremiah Suarez, who at the start of the year was a two star prospect, now up to two and a half star, now talking about getting called up for the Argentina national side. So everyone's been doing really well from that perspective. We've really not got too much to complain about at all. And truth be told, I don't think we have too much that we need to do next season because we, if we can keep this group together, have them be more comfortable in this shape and in this formation and better relationships playing and working together, I think we'll kick off a little bit earlier than we did in the season and hopefully carry that momentum through the Copa Libertadores as well. But today's about the league season. We've got a final game or two final games against Talleres in eighth spot and then a bit of a derby against San Lorenzo in seventh position as well. That'll give us a good insight as to how we're going to travel in the Copa Libertadores next week. But really, we just want to get a good performance. Uh, we've got a couple of knocks and fitness tests and stuff like that, but I want to try and get the best 11 out there for you guys so that you can see them in an episode. And I really, Antonio Brudos has got a bit of a knock, but I want to get him in this episode as well. So hopefully you guys can see how he's been performing in the second half of this season. Kickoff has come up without giving us that like little kind of preview highlight, which is disappointing. Brudos there's immediately just set up a goal. It's going to get ruled out for offside. You can tell because the linesman hasn't moved, but lovely set piece delivery. Most of his 28 assists so far this season will have come from set pieces. Um, and that was another beautiful, beautiful ball in. 
And now immediately, Toleris have got a goal of or a set piece of their own. Rodriguez with a corner. It doesn't clear the first man, but he gets inside. Suarez with a good save, and there's no counter attack coming forward. Good little overlapping run here from Alvarez. Found by Bridos. He does well to keep it in, actually. Cut back finds Oriol. Now Mateus. You can see all the bodies that we're getting inside the width of that 18-yard box, and quite a few of them in the box. Medina, back to Mateus now. Can hit a crossfield switch and does towards Oriol. Gets goal side. Can he get find a cutback ball? De Moya, he can indeed. 36 goal of the season for Jesus Mora. We've tried him in a few different roles. I don't love the fact that we're just playing with an advanced forward, but it's so effective. He's got 36 goals in all competitions this season, which is absolutely phenomenal, given that he didn't really score that many in like the opening 10 to 12 games of the season while we were trying to play him as a Trey Cortista. Um, but that is a wonderful finish. And great ball in from Oriol as well, the inverted winger. Getting inside the box, but still getting to the byline. Getting that simple cutback ball in is perfect. And we take a one-goal advantage in the first of these two matches. We've got another highlight here as well. Alvarez plays it back to Mateus. Now Garavano, full Argentine international, the oldest player in the squad. And Moyes just rifled one in from about 35 yards. I love that the little commentary part, and this is credit to Sports Interactive, it goes like, goal, 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 goal. Exactly how you'd expect a South American commentator to kind of highlight it. A good little passage of play. We wait for the press to come. They commit three men forward to the press of the ball. Britos finds Moya, and then he just turns around and basically strikes from distance. Keeper maybe could have done a little bit better with that one, but I will absolutely take it, and that is a fantastic finish. I'm just going to hit praise here with 10 minutes remaining. Want to get all these smiling faces down the bottom here, up there in that green. We are using as well the uh, TCS 3.0 skin now, and I just realized half of my visualizer skins have kind of disappeared a little bit. Tonico with a strike there. So we will try and fix those up. I would recommend everyone checking out the link in the comments to go and have a look at that skin as well. Oriol finds Britos who hits the crossbar. It's fallen for Tonico. 26 goal of the season for him. He's the guy that you guys have seen the least of because he's barely played. He's had so many injuries while we've been recording. It's been absolutely crazy. So to still get 26 goals in his first season in Argentina. Absolutely phenomenal from the young Brazilian wonder kid. And as simple as finish that he's going to get this year. No keeper, side footing it on his favoured left foot into the back of the net. And 3 0 at half time, we've not really got anything other to do than say we're delighted with the performance so far because that's pretty much where we're at. We will look at the hour mark trying to make some subs based on fitness and everything with that final game to go. But otherwise, everything is looking pretty fantastic as far as our performance is concerned, and we're one game closer to an undefeated league season. We've immediately gotten to that hour mark, so let's make these changes. Britos needs to have a bit of a spell. Alvarez can move to the 10. Augustin Diaz, who's been bid on by a few different uh, Brazilian sides, he can come off for a little bit. We'll get Dee Benedetto out there for Mateus, who does a ton of running for us at the base of that midfield. And Acosta can come on for Tonico, just to try and keep all those guys fit for the last game of the season. It's a highlight here as well. I'm just realizing it's continued. Ball cleared to Garavano, who can reset for us. Mateus, Caro to Tonico. Oriol found, and he's closed down well by the defense. Is that the end of the highlight? They've got a Raquel May up front. Wouldn't it be great to have him back in the game? It's obviously not the same one, but you already probably figured that out. It's 2040 in the gaming universe. You know these things. Subs are now gone through, so I've just thrown a demand more shout in there. But if we get another goal, I'll throw another praise shout in just to keep that morale up as high as humanly possible. Caro comes forward. Strike from the wide area. Again, it clips the post. Lara probably could have done a little bit better, but we do manage to get it away, or they managed to get it away. Into the last 10 minutes now, I'm going to throw that praise shout out there. Let's just give everyone a bit of a boost morale-wise. Moya's going to get a chance from the free kick to try and uh, get that hat trick, and he's gotten it. It's going to go down as a Lara own goal, isn't it? It is. So his free kick, we'll check it out here in three dimensions. I think it clips the underside of the crossbar, bounces back out, and then hits Lara in the back and goes in. So time running out for Moya to get that hat trick, which I do think he deserves, but uh, we do get the fourth goal in the contest. Two additional minutes to be added on, and we're through that now. 4-0, a commanding victory away from home. I'm going to say, good win, boys. Well done. Everybody seems relatively happy, and it sets us up nicely to get into the last game of the season in a decent run of form to hopefully get that undefeated league season. We've got a 100 goal difference as well. That's fantastic as well. Moya gets the man of the match award, 8.6 match rating and two goals to his name. A couple of players that have got fitness concerns will give them a bit of a rest before the next match, but we'll give Moya some praise first. We'll tell him how proud we are of how he behaved or how he played. And then these guys that need rests, or these guys that have just had fitness tests, like Britos, Tonico, Moya, all that sort of stuff, we're just gonna give them just a day's rest. And then everyone else, they can pretty much just kind of like get through the training session. We've got a full seven day gap. And Magic of Editing, we're gonna jump forward to that now. All right, and just like that, we are a week ahead. Everybody got through the working week or the training week without any issues or concerns. The only change 
uh, and it's enforced by an international break. Jeremiah Suarez has gone off with the Argentina under-20 side. So it does mean our backup goalkeeper, Santiago Gunali, will come in. Only 20 years of age, just a youth prospect that kind of came through. We kept him as a backup. He's not even on the bench most weeks because we're not required to put a keeper on the bench. And if you're not required, why would you do it? So we'll see how that goes. But otherwise, unchanged lineup from the outfield perspective, which we haven't been able to do too many times this season. So hopefully, most of the uh, injury issues that we've had, international call-up issues we've had, won't be as big an obstacle next season. And we can really carry that form into the Copa Libertadores. And also, like we're playing San Lorenzo in that competition. So if we can spank them today in the league, maybe that gives us a bit of a psychological advantage heading into those ties as well, which I'll, of course, bring you guys in the next episode. All right, I've just fixed up the display from the previous uh, game, and I would highly recommend this skin. I think everyone should have a look at it. I think it's fantastic, but uh, let me know if you've got other skins that you've enjoyed using in the comment section below as well. I'll definitely check them out. Throwing a demand more shout in there. This first half has kind of gone our way statistically, but not much in terms of highlights. Moya with the ball here. Oriol, back to Moya, just as I've said that. Curse of the commentator. I have forced us to get that uh, ball in the back of the net again. And a 38th goal of the season for Moya as well. He's finishing the season in sparkling form. Tonico to Moya. Good reverse pass. Oriol just puts it back into a great spot. Moya's there. Gets in front of the defender, Salgado. Jacques in goal. Can do absolutely nothing about it. And we take a lead. San Lorenzo at this stage. Again, curse the commentator. I'm bound to make them or create a goal for them here. Yet to have a shot in the entirety of the first half. Tonico's beaten a man here and gone down. Cassas is going to go off. So straight red card for that. And it means we're going to finish the game against 10 men. Surely, without them having a shot with 11, they cannot get anything together with uh, 10 men remaining. But 1-0 up, I'm just going to say I'm happy with your performance so far. Keep it up. Again, after a certain point in this game, you become very formulaic with things. I'm formulaic with a lot of the team talks. I'm formulaic with the shouts now. You just tend to follow that kind of same pattern once you get to a certain point in a save or in a career or in a cycle of the game itself. Super excited about FM22 as well. Let us know what you guys are most excited about in the comment section below. Let me know what saves you guys are firing up. Oriol with possession here down the right-hand side. Cut back. Alvarez tries to put it back in. Garavano should reset for us. We're keeping three defenders back against one striker, which is good. Oh, I tell you what, Moya nearly just... He just ran out of real estate there to really try and get that shot back on target. But it was a good ball in behind. Caro with the throw in him. Teos should get it and reset. Across to Alvarez. Back to him again. Caro. Now to Tonico. Overlapping run. Wide left-hand side of the 18-yard box. Again, you can see how narrow we are. Like, every player is inside that 18-yard box width. And some of that quick passing that we do, that quick short passing, really helps unlock defenses that are trying to break and be deep against this. Caro in possession here. Can reset and send us back through. We will have a look at subs probably after this highlight as well. Tonico down the left-hand side. Good cutback ball. Pinball's around and they managed to get it away. Cristaldo. Mejia with a good tackle, but it's going to go back the way of San Lorenzo. Moyes won it back in a great spot. Now Tonico beats one man, goes the drive from distance, which has never really been his strength. And the keeper watches it safely behind for the goal kick. Subs, again, we're just going to go with head over heart. There's a couple of 6.4s and stuff out there. I'm not going to worry about that. We just want to keep everyone fit and not run any additional injury risk. So the three changes are going to be uh, Oriel is going to come off for Alvarez, the right winger. Mateus will come off for D. Benedetto for the second game in a row. And Alvarez, our right wing back, will come off for Augustin Diaz. Just going to tell them all that I've got faith in them. And then we're going to throw one more demand more shout out there. 30 minutes remaining. Free kick from distance. Moya finds Magia, and it's two Colombian wonder kids combining. Magia's head up just beyond the far post. And there's a good chance here we're going to have 24 shots, 2.85 XG, and finish just 1-0 victors, which does happen. Caro, though, with the throw in here, a chance to add something on the referee. He's blown his whistle, and he's going to go over and have a look at the set, or at the VAR stand. Again, I would love if we could turn this off as an option so I don't have to watch this dot, this grey dot, just run towards the screen and then take its time and then run back out and make a decision. Just quality of life improvements like that help when you play 1,600 hours of a game. Britos from the penalty spot to close out his season sends the keeper the wrong way. It's a phenomenal finish from him. 18th goal of the season for him. And we are 10 minutes away from River Plate history. I don't think they've had an undefeated season before. I don't think they've ever had an invincible squad before despite all they've accomplished in Argentina. And we could be one to uh, join some of the very illustrious history books at River Plate. I'm going to throw one more demand more shout out there. Let's try and get a third goal to wrap this up. Britos to Di Benedetto. Caro with a great ball in. Alvarez powers ahead of home. Six goal of the season. Six goals is a pretty good competition from a guy who doesn't start a lot of games. So a wonderful, wonderful effort from him. See it here in three dimensions. Caro gets it back from Britos. 
or sorry, back from Di Benedetto, hangs the ball back stick, Alvarez gets goal side. He's actually side footed at home. I thought it was a header in the 2D highlight, but that is excellent technique to get that back on target and keep can do absolutely nothing about it. And going into a Copa Libertadores tie, we have kept San Lorenzo to no shots. I know they were 10 men for a full half, but that is a fairly dominant performance from the boys. I'm going to say very happy with the result and the way that you guys played. And that means we close out not just the title, but an undefeated season or an invincible season. 30 shots in the end for that 3-0 victory. Ganali, as it's noted there, gets a clean sheet on De Beer. We're going to give Britos a little bit of praise. I'm trying to bring him really like under my wing and put an arm around him wherever we can. And River complete invincible season. 38 games played, 35 wins, 3 draws, no defeats, plus 103 goal difference and 108 points. That is absolutely ridiculous. Oh, you'll notice as well, and this is a separate note that you've already probably picked up on, I've set everything to pounds because we'll probably work in pounds when we make the jump to Europe. That's where my head's at. We're going to start making that transition because pesos was too hard to figure out globally if I want to put like release clauses in for people like Moya and Tonico and bring them to Europe with this, but that's future content spoilers. Here we go. We'll go through the end of season review because you guys rarely see it at the moment. 2040 season. New arrivals, Tonico, who was a wonder kid when we got him now, 21-year-old pacey hitman. Jesus Moya, still a wonder kid. Mateus, still a defensive midfielder. 23-year-old Alberto Caro, who came across from us or from Mexico uh, with us as we made that jump as well. And George Medea, 19-year-old wonder kid in defense there. Most appearances went to Moya, unsurprisingly. 55 starts. Magia also 55 starts pretty much every game that we played this season. 38 goals for Moya has him at the top of that list as well. 26 for Tonico, which is pretty impressive from only 20, oh, sorry, 33 appearances. 14 assists for Moya, 11 for Tonico, 6 for Caro from that de- uh, deeper spot. 7 from Mateus is surprising. And highest average rating goes to Tonico, actually 7.35 from his 36 appearances this season. But Moya getting 7.3 from uh, 55 is very impressive as well. Biggest win, 7-0 over Lannis. Biggest or match to remember, a 4-0 away win over Union. The goal of the season goes to Moya for that distant strike that he actually just got in the last game or the second last game of the season. That second goal that he got, absolutely fantastic from him. How we lined up is pretty much the same as like our best 11. They've kind of got some of the defense in the wrong positions, but otherwise it's pretty close to uh, exactly how we lined up all year. Player awards, Britos wins fans player of the season and young player of the season. Signing of the season goes to Jesus Moya as this goal of the season. Top goal scorer, most assists with 30 to Antonio Britos. Incredible performance from him. 12 player of the match awards and 7.7 as a average rating across a season is absolutely wonderful. Record breakers, Antonio Britos, 30 goals, 30 assists this season. His most assists via River Plate player in this game universe. Jeremiah Suarez, 20-year-old wonder kid, 35 clean sheets from him. Absolutely fantastic as well. All right, and to finish off, Antonio Britos gets the Player of the Season award for the Argentine Premier Division. Dylan Benega uh, from Estudiantes finishes as runner-up and Martin Viro from San Lorenzo in third spot. I'm going to put my arm around him, say congratulations, and he seems very, very happy, which is great. It means we'll hold on to him for a little bit longer. Moya also gets the leading scorer for the season, 27 goals in 38 league appearances, well ahead of uh, Sion from Newell's Old Boys with 22 goals. I'm going to put my arm around him as well and give him a bit of a boost also. So that closes out the season. The squad I'm still relatively happy with. We might have a look at one or two positions depending on what's available in the market. We are also tracking a few wonder kids from South America that we're kind of keeping an eye on. So if any of them join, if any of them come in, we'll, of course, keep you guys up to date. They would just be, I think, to kind of like refresh a bit of our squad depth. I don't think there's anyone out there that I look at as being like, okay, a player that we have to bring in or a player that we have to get to kind of push us to the next level. And we haven't got a ton of transfer budget, so some of these players are going to be a bit of a challenge if we want to try and bring them in. But as always, thank you so much for watching. That is the part that I appreciate the most. If you do want to help celebrate our Invincible League season, our place in the history books, please drop a like on this video. You can also subscribe to Catch Up State on all of our future videos as we head towards the end of the FM21 cycle and some exciting stuff happening in FM22 that we'll announce in the next few weeks. But like I said at the start, more than anything, I just appreciate you guys watching. As always, I've been Sean and I'll see you all again in the mixer.